Hi, welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I'm going to do another Kendall letter painting. I keep saying that I'm going to move on to something else, and then I start to get another idea. And I don't have that many in my collection. I did mess up with my camera this time. I did actually want to get one layer done before I started filming. And it's not, uh, it's not exactly what I was looking for, but it wasn't a wet and wet technique. What I did was just kind of wet paint into wet paint. And Pulled around until I got kind of a almost a sugary mystery look. Now what I'm going to do is go into all the areas that are outlined and just um, make it much more complicated. See what happens. As I always say, these are very very exp experimental works that I do on these YouTubes, and never know what's going to happen. But I do want to build up the paint and. I may go back into a lot of the other areas too, but I want to build up the paint this time and not let it bleed. Do it more in a more traditional acrylic or oil painting manner. And I'm not in love with what I had, so I'm not worried about losing it. But just not sure how this is going to work with this real misty look. And it's going to take some time too, so I hope this doesn't get too long. That's Like I said, that's why I did the first layer. I don't like my YouTubes to go on and on and on. I think that can, can be boring, or at least it's boring to me. Maybe not to everyone, but I don't personally like to watch somebody paint, but that I'm a painter, so it makes a big difference. There are a lot of interesting programs on TV where people paint, and they seem to like it or they wouldn't be on TV. But uh, I like to just really move things along. And I want to really just let the colors mix on the paper. Get a little muddy right through there. And that's better. Great thing about acrylic paint. You can go over it up to a point and then it starts to really, really mess up. Still think that's too muddy, so I'm going to see if I can't get some really strong blue-green into it. That's better. Then move on to another area. I think I better use more yellow. really appreciate all the nice comments I'm getting about this series. It has been a real interesting series for me too. Not something I think that most artists do. They don't really actually create while they're filming. But uh, after 20 years of standing in front of college students, I feel like I can do just about anything. Okay. So far I'm not real happy, but that usually happens lots of times when I do these things. That at the beginning, not real happy with it, but just barely started. So I keep on going and see what happens. You can always go over it. I do want to keep that misty quality in the back, but I might go over that too. The reason I have all those little dots is for design purposes, but also because I thought, well, if I'm going to really do some traditional handling of the paint in this W, then it's going to really stick out. And in all artwork, you want it to all work together. Unity is what people like to call it or whatever. And I thought, well, that's it's really going to stick out. So, got those little shapes because I think if I go into them, then it'll it'll work against this very muted background area because this is to my eye you know we all look at things differently to my eye this really is sticking out like sore thumb right now because of the extreme difference in the level of abstraction but just keep on going you really don't like that muddy area still so I'll let it dry so I can go over it because that didn't, it's not what I want. I've got such a pastel area around it 
that. I think that's too much contrast to have it so muddy like that. Liking more of what's happening over there. I think that's working better with the background area. Nothing like painting. I really do love to paint. I know I say that all the time. But to me, there's just nothing like it. I've been working at it since, I guess since I was 12, really. Because before then, I worked in pastels, graphite, whatever. My mother was so supportive, and I really appreciate that because a lot of people realize, oh, don't do that, don't do that. You can't make a living, you know, you know leave it alone. And that's sad because for some people, this is really their life. And you don't want to take away somebody's life. I'll never forget what former superintendent of Montgomery County Schools, Arnold Sari, said. I think I've mentioned this before. When they were talking about, oh, get those frills out of the school. You don't need art. You don't need music. And he said, you know, what's one person's frill is another person's life. <laughs> Uh, just something that, uh, that's not exact quote. I forget exactly what he said right now. Oh, necessity. It, it's another person's necessity of life. I thought, well, that is somebody who really understands artists. And I really, I've always appreciated that. I've qu often quoted that to people because um, I have had a number of students that were t told, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And they listened. They listened to them. And they were so unhappy that they eventually did go into art at a much later age. And uh, that's really sorry. And that's really, that's really sad that uh, all the people did to discourage them was just delay them. So, you know, somebody's really into art and you think, oh, don't do that, don't do that, because you won't get anywhere with it. Don't discourage them. They can at least do something with it. They may not be able to make a living at it. I am a professional artist. I do actually sell my work. Don't make a huge living, but I pay taxes and everything. And I taught at the university for a long time. And oh, I'm starting to really like this. I think talking <laughs> is helping me <laughs> to really get some things done now into this where I'm getting some vibrancy going. You can see I'm messing that, but that's so easy to fix. No big deal. Oh, I was always, re I've always heard this from so many people and it's always like kind of taking me back when they say I can't do anything with art I can't even draw a straight line well you know that's what you have a real ruler for I mean I could but I have to keep messing with it <laughs> I don't think anybody can actually really draw a straight line you have to keep modifying until you get it right but a lot of people they just think that there's just nothing they can do with art and that's not true. Now, as I said before, I had students actually do it in my Art of Preach class because then they started to understand that it was just so much more than drawing. There's so much more to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Starting to get some interesting things going by going back into that W. I'm going to have to, of course, fix it up because it's dripping, <laughs> doing some weird things. All right. I think I've only been going like 10 minutes. So now I'm going to go into those little drops, whatever they are so that this will balance out because I think that otherwise it's going to look really funny. I might have to change them a little bit too as I get outside the areas of them. No problem. It's great to have something to do that you truly, truly love. I feel very sorry for people that don't have something that they love, that they keep learning about. Yeah, I definitely was in the right profession. I truly believe in learning. It doesn't have to be art. Some people are mathematically inclined. Some people are really into science. And if you are learning your whole life, life is exciting. I think when people stop learning, they're bored. In my opinion, certainly don't have to agree with me, but I think that people are a lot of adults are bored because they stopped learning. They stopped doing what little children do. Fascinated with the world. I'll never forget my, watching my son when he was two years old, going around the house, just everything was new, everything was wonderful. Everything was his oyster. And it can still be that way as an adult because we don't know everything. 
And there's so many things that people can learn and develop themselves. Yeah, I'm starting to like this now. I think this is going to work pretty well. I'm dripping all over the place, but that's not a problem. I think I'll fix that, fix all the edges up when I'm done. But some interesting things are starting to happen. I was real worried that since I did that first layer, the paint on the palette was going to be all dried up. Because yeah, acrylics dries so fast. But it looks like I'm doing okay there, so that's nice. I never know with these demos. Still, this is, I think it's going to turn out fairly well. It's just not <laughs> what I've been wanting to get. Uh, so far, if you go to my website, and the link is in the description, and look at these, the collection Kindle letters, click on it, and then you'll see them all. The A one is the one I like the best. Now, I don't want to do exactly the same thing again, but that is the one that I think turned out the best. It has kind of a 3D look that I wasn't trying to get. That turned out really nice. And this is just not it. I want to get it really much more complicated. So I'm probably going to go back in to the area around the W after I fix it up where all it's messed up in places. And probably do some more. I don't know. I'm so pressed for time all the time. And I, I do these to get some interest in my work and also to kind of entertain. Hopefully it is entertaining. Um, I think the comments indicate that it is. And that, that's very nice. But um, I don't know. I want it to be more complicated like that one. And probably I'm going to have to just give up on trying to get a really interesting contrast between the bleated areas and the more traditional areas. But uh, I think I'm going to probably stop now and think about that. That's the wonderful thing about art is it's always an adventure. Unless you try to be really, really calculated. And for me, I would just, as I said before, I wouldn't do art if I had. I would not be interested if I was just trying to copy a photograph, which I can do, and I will do for money. If anybody ever wants me to reproduce a photograph, I'd be glad to do that for you. But if that's what I did, and I couldn't have brushwork, and it just had to be exactly what a photograph looked like, I would quit. It just would not be for me. And I love all the different levels of abstraction I do. And the Kindle Letters is really one where I really get into just being wild, just really having fun with the paint, having the letter, but really turning it into something else. And letting the paint, painting talk to me. All artists talk about that. There's a point where you have an idea, and then the painting starts talking to you. <laughs> it says, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? This might be good, you know, and uh, this is looking good. And it becomes a very, very complicated process. Well, I'm going to stop there, and I have a feeling the whole thing is going to be reworked. But I do like what I've got through here, but I don't like the way it's working with the back. So I might just either bleed it some more or just get much more complicated. More work is going to be done, so be sure to click on the link that will be at the top of the description to see how it turns out. Also, there are links to my artwork on my, in my Etsy shop, my website, and other places.